that explore the big questions in science, technology, history, and nature that reward your curiosity and feed your brilliant, inquisitive mind. Monthly subscriptions start at just $2.99 a month. Long live the curious. Start your free trial today at curiositystream.com. This is CNN, the most trusted name in news. Closed captioning brought to you by Farberware Neat Nest, stacked and intact. Neat Nest by Farberware, ingenious space-saving design, all designed to stack and protect the lids and the pan surface. Farberware Neat Nest, stacked and intact. This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. Here's the breaking news. A source close to President Trump telling CNN that the president now sees impeachment as a real possibility when Democrats take control of the House in January. Another source close to the White House tells CNN the issues causing the West Wing the most concern are the campaign finance violations alleged by prosecutors for the Southern District of New York. Those are the hush money payments President Trump directed his former attorney, Michael Cohen, to make payments to Trump's alleged mistresses just before the 2016 election. Also breaking tonight, a bipartisan group of 44 former U.S. senators penning an op-ed in the Washington Post warning the country's entering what they call a dangerous period, saying the foundational principles of our democracy and our national security interests are at stake. They're calling on current senators to zealously safeguard our democracy. A lot to get to. So I want to bring in now Ryan Lizza, uh, Julia Kayyem, and Greg Miller. He is the author of The Apprentice, Trump, Russia, and the Subversion of American Democracy. So good to have all of you on this evening. So let me start with you, Ryan. Here it is right here. You see what I'm reaching for. This is uh, the, the letter that the op that yeah, 44 yeah. senators wrote, uh, saying that we have to be guardians of our democracy. What does that say about the state of our country to you that you have these people doing this? Well, first, first of all, it was mostly Democrats, but there were about a half a dozen or so Republicans mm -hmm. in there. And it suggests that there are these people out there, former senators, who believe that the political system isn't quite grappling with the seriousness of what's going on. And they want to nudge their fellow senators and, and basically tell them to step up and take this a little more seriously than you have been, that what they're reading in the papers, what they're learning obviously from the Mueller investigation is, is serious and to get out of their partisan thinking and make sure that just because, you know, this president might be of the same party, mm -hmm. that you look at the, the allegations seriously and independently. We had a great example today with Orrin Hatch who didn't do that. Well, I just want to ask you, is, yeah. that, is that what they're saying? Okay, don't be like Orrin Hatch and say, it doesn't really matter. I don't care if it's a crime or not, or it's a Democrat, or you can make up a crime. It, Look, if there was a headline of this piece, it was put the country before party, yeah. right? That, that's, what the, that's what they're saying. Here's what a source uh, close to the president is saying, uh, Juliet, that Trump says that he has uh, ex that expressed concern that he could be impeached when the Dems take control of the House. Should he be worried? Oh, yes. And I mean, it's actually sort of so rationally clear for him. And I think, um, I, I mean, I don't know if he will be impeached. That's a lot of senators that have to defect to actually have the impeachment stick. But I, I don't get, I, I think it's absurd to take impeachment off the table. I know, you know, Jim Comey yesterday, the former FBI director, was, you know, said in New York, you know, we just have to vote him out in 2020. I, there's nothing I've seen over the last two years that would suggest this thing is stopping. If any, you know, it's gotten closer to the White House. It's worse than any of us ever imagined. It's, it's you know, about, you know, sex and payoffs and Russia collusion and contacts with the Russians. I say it's on the table. I've never said that before. I don't know where it heads, and the president ought to be worried. Well, that's one thing we should know. I and mean, when you're talking about sex and paying off porn stars, listen, Folks in the Bible Belt in the middle of the country and evangelicals, they, they will never stand for this, right? Bad. That's uh, that was yeah, sarcastic. I, I'll be the last person to speak for them. Yeah, I know. I, I'd be the last person to speak for them. But I do, just picking up on Ryan, Ryan's point, though, yeah. look, you know, people have been waiting for a eureka moment when the country stands up and says, let's fight. You know, it may just be a lot of you know, uh, dribbles and, and raindrops and trickles down until a moment in which it's not sustainable. And this yeah. letter is a part of that. Okay. It's not going to be the next day we wake up. All right, Greg, I want to bring you in now. And I want you to check out this list. 
16 Trump associates, 16 of them who have contacts with Russia. And this is just the people we know about. Do you think there are even more, possibly? Uh, I think that there's always a chance that there's more. Um, we keep learning more and more, it seems almost every week in, in this saga. And I think that, you know, you look at that list and one of the amazing things about it is it's hard to, uh, as far as I know, not one of them ever reached out to the FBI or reported any of these contacts in, in a way that indicated that any of them were, were troubled by these, their interactions with Russia. Uh, the way that you would expect people who are interested in public service to be. Yeah. So they didn't report it, as you said, to your knowledge, but uh, some of them did lie about their contacts to the That's FBI. That's right. That's right. There were there were lots of uh, lots of attempts to cover these things up. I mean, the other thing that I think that's interesting about this is just sort of, you know, on both sides, on the Russian side and on the the Trump side and and his inner circle, their their trade craft here was so clumsy across the board that that it hasn't been that hard really for rush for Robert mm -hmm. Mueller to to piece together astonishing details about all of these contacts mm -hmm. Ryan President Trump has insisted repeatedly that his campaign had nothing to do with Russia take a listen to this I have nothing to do with Putin I have nothing to do with Russia to the best of my t knowledge no person that I deal with does. It has nothing to do with what they started out looking for Russians involved in our campaign. There were none. I have nothing to do with Russia. There is no collusion. We have nothing to do with Russia. So, so far we know, and here's a list of 16 people. There, you see that list? Does that, does that look like, I mean, we had to squeeze the font smaller so that they could fit all on one page in case I needed to reference them. That's 16 people. Does that look like nothing that's to do with Russia? That's a lot of people. And I mean, the, and <laughs> what we've learned most directly is that right through 2016, he was and his company was still negotiating this building deal in, in Russia. I mean, to me, that's the most important revelation of the last few weeks because that show, that that means that while he was taking positions as uh, as a candidate on Putin, on sanctions, on what to do about Russia, he was also trying to get something from Moscow, right? Yeah. To me, that's one of the, the, the most, you know, that might not even be illegal, but in terms of an abuse of his position at the time is, 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 is pretty serious. It has nothing to do, I wonder what something to do with Russia <laughs> well, looks he just, like. He just lies, he, he, yeah. he, can't, he, just, he just denies things all the time. But can I just say one thing about impeachment? Sure. I mean, we have never had a scandal of this magnitude in a president's first term. All the big possible impeachment scandals were second term issues, right? Watergate really flowered after Nixon's reelection. Mm -hmm. uh, Iran Contra, which obviously didn't lead to impeachment, that was a, a second term issue. And the Monica Lewinsky scandal, second term. So we're kind of in this unusual position with a big, explosive, potential abuse of power scandal before a president's reelection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a number of ways that th this could go down. People, if, if things were that serious, he, he could. Uh, people could, Republicans could call on him to resign. He could be primaried and lose in a primary. Um, or a lot of people could say, you know what, there's an election cam campaign coming up the way Comey did. That's the way to deal with this, not with impeachment. Just let the American people decide. So yeah. I don't think impeachment is, is, is a foregone conclusion, even if the allegations in the final Mueller report are extremely serious. Julia, you're the security expert. I just I want to follow up on something that Greg said earlier, that not one of these people reported this to the FBI. What kind of red flags does that raise to you? Uh, well, I think they were willing. Uh, so, so this is what's important to remember. The FBI's investigation into Russian influence in the 2016 election uh, was concerned with both campaigns because of some Internet activity that they saw. Um, and so their concern was that the Russians were going to take advantage of either the Trump or Clinton campaign. What ended up happening, what, to their dismay, obviously, as we've seen, is that the Trump campaign was the only campaign that actually wanted it. None of these people, um, not only did they not call the FBI, they, uh, they actively engaged in it, whether it's Donald Trump Jr. and the Trump Tower meeting, whether it's the uh, financial issues involved with Manafort and others and, and the president himself. So, so either you believe that these 16 people are the biggest idiots in the world and had no idea that they were getting played, or you believe this this was the Russians could not believe how great this was mm -hmm. because they found 16 plus people who were willing to play with them 
Uh, and they had something, of course, on Donald Trump, which is fi his financial uh, desires uh, regarding uh, uh, Trump Moscow. So, you know, I mean, it was a win-win for the two of that, for yeah. those two parties and a total loss for the American public. Stand by, I know you want to get in, but I just want to get Greg in here. Greg, this list includes two of Trump's children, his son-in-law, his longtime personal lawyer, campaign chairman. Is there any way that these meetings and conversations were happening without Trump's blessing? Well, I mean, it's hard to fathom that his uh, inner circle and your, as you say, his, his closest inner, parts of his inner circle would do things that they thought that they thought might go against their father or father-in-law's wishes. I mean, we're still waiting for proof or evidence that that he was actually in the loop on these meetings. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's hard to imagine that he wasn't. Um, they, I know that the House Democrats and the Intelligence Committee are are really keen to speak again with Jared Kushner and with Donald Trump Jr. to ask that very question, to go back over this timeline about Donald Trump Jr.'s calls to an, uh, a blacked out number while he was you know, negotiating this interaction with Russians at Trump Tower. Who was he calling? He claimed he couldn't remember. I mean, there are reasons to suspect that Trump was uh, looped in on this, mm -hmm. and that's uh, one of the big questions that we are waiting for Mueller or someone else to answer. Ryan, I'll get you on the other side. i got to get to a break. Everybody stay with me. A source says that alleged Russian spy Maria Butina has changed her plea and is now cooperating with federal prosecutors. What could she know? Once I started looking for car insurance, it was a no-brainer. I switched to Geico and saved hundreds. That's a win. But it's not the only reason I switched. The GEICO app makes it easy to manage my policy. I can pay my bill, add a new driver, or even file a claim. Woo! Hey, now, that's a win-win. Thank you. Switch to GEICO. It's a win-win. Give a gift that brings the ones you love even closer with a DNA kit from 23andMe. And this holiday, get 30% off each kit at 23andMe.com. Building a better bank starts with looking at something old and saying, really? So Capital One is building something completely new. Capital One Cafes. Inviting places with people here to help you, not sell you. And savings and checking accounts with no fees or minimums, because that's how it should be. You can open one from right here or anywhere in five minutes. Seriously, five minutes. This is Banking Reimagined. What's in your wallet? This holiday season, make Tommy John the ultimate stocking stuffer. And say goodbye to awkward adjustment moments like these. The wedgie shift. The party pick. And the hide and seek. You won't have those problems when you upgrade to Tommy John. Our underwear is made with a luxuriously soft, lightweight, breathable fabric that stretches in 16 different directions. It stays put so there's no bunching, no riding up, and no more wedgies. Guaranteed. Our stay put waistband won't roll down or leave marks, and Tommy John underwear is designed for maximum breathability, which means you'll be cool and dry all day long. Overcome the uncomfortable with Tommy John. Give the gift of life-changing comfort with limited edition gifts. Visit TommyJohn.com now and use the promo code on your screen to get 20% off. Plus, find out how you can get free expedited shipping and guaranteed Christmas delivery on orders placed by December 19th. That's TommyJohn.com. Tommy John. No adjustment needed. You eat healthy, take statins, but still struggle to lower your LDL bad cholesterol. You also have heart disease and fear a heart attack or stroke could strike without warning, pulling you away from everything you love. Because with high LDL, your risk of a heart attack or stroke is real. Now you can reduce that risk with Repatha. Repatha plus a statin dramatically lowers your LDL bad cholesterol by 63% and is proven to significantly drop your risk of having a devastating heart attack or stroke. 
Do not take Repatha if you are allergic to it. Repatha may cause serious allergic reactions. Signs include redness, severe rash or itching, swollen face or trouble breathing. Most common side effects include runny nose, sore throat, common cold symptoms, flu or flu-like symptoms, back pain, high blood sugar, and redness, pain, or bruising at the injection site. Don't let a heart attack or stroke come between you and everything you love. Tell your doctor you're ready to lower your LDL and reduce your risk for real with Repatha. Pay no more than $5 per month with the Repatha copay card. What happened? What's up? Go, 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 go. They have a ring. Nobody's around. They didn't see you. Well, actually, they did. And yep, they shared it with the whole neighborhood. There's a feature on the Ring app called Neighbors. It's like a neighborhood watch, but on your phone. Oh, and here's the best part. Is that me? Yep. Now the whole neighborhood can stay safe and aware of potential crime all in real time. Get your holiday savings now at ring.com and these fine retailers. Alleged Russian spy Maria Buchina is now cooperating with federal prosecutors. As part of the plea deal, she's admitting that she conspired with Russian government official, a Russian government official, to operate in the U.S. for Russia. Ryan, Juliet, and Greg are back with me. Every day, there's something else. Greg, how significant is, that, is it that an alleged Russian spy is now cooperating with federal prosecutors? Well, it's, it's a really remarkable development in many ways, right? I mean, all of the... Robert Mueller has already indicted quite a number of Russian individuals, but they're beyond reach of the U.S. government. Nobody really believes that they will ever be brought to the United States and prosecuted. So here's somebody who has been working on behalf of the Kremlin in the United States for a number of years, who's not only here, not only facing legal consequence, but actually prosecuting. It's, a, it's mm -hmm. quite a, an interesting development. Butina asked the then candidate Trump, a question at a 2015 campaign event. Take a listen. I'm visiting from Russia, ah, so my question... Putin. Good friend of Obama, Putin. My he question... He likes Obama a lot. Go ahead. If you would be elected as a president, what will be your foreign policy, politics, especially in the relationships with my country? And do you want to continue the politics of sanctions that are damaging of both economy, or you have any other ideas? Okay. Obama gets along with nobody. The whole world hates us. I know Putin, and I'll tell you what, we'd get along with Putin. I believe I would get along very nicely with Putin. Okay? Okay, Ryan, I'm going to let you have a crack at it, because, uh, well, by the way, Putin was the first person he called on. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. Oh. I mean, look, the, the Russians obviously were trying to penetrate our elections in every way possible, right? And some of the, some of the campaigns were very sophisticated, as with the, the hacking and dumping campaigns. And a lot of them just looked almost random, right? Like, is this Butina really a master spy, someone who got up at a public event and asked Trump a question? And if you look at the, the, the stuff that's come out today, it seems like she kind of bungled, bumbled into this relationship with the Russian government. And they were like, you know, yes, go, go see whatever links you can get, right? I don't, she doesn't strike me as the greatest Russian spy <laughs> ever to hit our soil. But that doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean she didn't commit crimes. Yeah. I mean, with a lot of these people, I keep thinking of what, what Deep Throat uh, said during Watergate to, uh, to, uh, to Woodward. He, you know, he said, these are not very bright guys and things got out of hand, right? <laughs> so I don't necessarily think we're looking at uh, criminal geniuses, <laughs> but you don't have to be a criminal genius to commit crimes. Are right? you talking about Putin or are you talking about the people I'm just talking contact? about that, 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 that list that you, you know, yeah. put, up, put up there. And look, Trump, I keep coming back to this, at that moment when he's talking about how great he gets along with Putin, he was trying to build a, uh, a, a, a building in Moscow that would have made him millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah but even, listen, even if you're not, I don't know, even if you don't, you are, cannot read the speed limit on a highway, let's just put it Absolutely. that way, I don't want to say not smart enough or whatever, even if you're, um, less than smart and you can't do that, you still get a ticket for speeding. 100%. percent i am just saying, sometimes we think of this as this very complicated criminal conspiracy where everything was well thought out. To me, it looks like a bunch of not the brightest people well, in the world, but stupid people committing crimes are still criminals. But isn't that, that's a defense, Juliet, in a way saying, I mean, we're getting a little far no. afield here, saying, oh, well, we're just bumble. We didn't know. We were just, oh, we didn't that's know. No, I mean, I think, 
I think, I mean, I think two things. I mean, one is just uh, to Ryan's point, the one of the greatest uh, things coming out of today was the reporting that Erickson, that's the boyfriend that she, the Republican operative boyfriend, literally writes down on a piece of paper how to respond to FSB, that's the intelligence agency in Russia, offer of employment. He actually writes down, should I be, you know, should I do treason for my country or not? Um, mm. So these are not the smartest, pe smartest people, but I just, uh, to, put, to put it in context of, though, the impact of it. While it's, you know, there, there are lots of bumbling, lots of characters that you can't, like, it's not even that you can't imagine they're next to the president. Like, none of us have ever met people like this in our lives. I mean, this group of people are, um, you know, sort of not, not your typical people you meet in, in normal employment. But, um, you know, obviously the impact of, 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 of Putin's success here in the United States has not only sort of undermined our democratic processes mm -hmm. and, and led to these illegalities, but just look at the world today. I mean, look at France, look at England, look at, you know, what, what is happening with this post-World War II order, which has been um, undermined uh, significantly by the fact that the U.S. is not checking Russia's aggression, either in Western Europe or in countries closer to Russia. So, um, and you know, so Putin has sort of won this part. I have great confidence he he doesn't win the war, but um, but it has had an in impact when you just look around the world right now in terms of the world order. And he was able to destroy because Trump was willing to play along with him. Yeah. So listen, I, I've got to. I got to say this. It's important to note that this was the first time that Trump mentioned a Russian sanction relief when we're talking about that response uh, to Butna. And, and Greg, so let me ask you this. Butna also met with Don Jr. at an NRA event and socialized with former Trump campaign aide J.D. Gordon. Do you think there's any way to explain this access uh, to, so close uh, to the Trump campaign on multiple occasions? I mean, her, her, it was, I think it was her handler, uh, Torshin, who met with Don Jr. as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as Ryan said, this was just a multi directional attempt by Russia to penetrate all parts of the American political landscape in 2016. And, and I would say that there's a, there's an, there's a brazenness to this effort that is really, um, mind-boggling in many ways. I mean, we you just showed footage of Butina popping up at a public event asking a question of the future president of the United States. I mean, you had to see, know that the Kremlin is is really enjoying that moment uh, mm -hmm. back in Moscow. The um, the attacks, the hack of the DNC was was not all that sophisticated, really. Uh, and the Russians were buying, um, putting ads on Facebook and paying in rubles. I mean, there's a, there's a sort of a brazen quality to this entire campaign that gets at, you know, there's, a, there's some taunting that's going on here. They're not really too worried about covering their tracks. They're trying to make it known that they are messing with us and they are showing uh, Russians for Vladimir Putin's benefit and Americans that we can be messed with. Yeah. Uh, Greg, Ryan, Juliet, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. So. We'll be right back. When your craving strikes, you need your wingman. No one can totally satisfy a craving quite like your wingman. I can't believe you got me a tennis bracelet. Mm hmm. She can thank me for that. I showed my dad this deal at Hellsburg. He bought jewelry, and I got this. It's my finder's fit. Get a free Nintendo Switch system when you buy a gift at Hellsburg Diamonds. Oh, good, they're here. You can just leave them on the porch. Let ADT help protect your packages this holiday season. Package Protection Service, brought to you by ADT. I got a very, very small loan from my father. You gotta start somewhere. I'm a reporter from the New York Times. I'm aware of bank statements, tax returns, thousands of property records. 1995 showed that he was bleeding money. Go through it all, understand it all. Holy number by number. Brick by brick. That's when we realized that's fraud. I built this empire. I did it by myself. This holiday season, families near you need your help. Visit redcross.org now to donate.
Home sweet home. Your sanctuary. You know you need to protect it with home security, but traditional alarm companies have made things so complicated, you just keep putting it on the bottom of your list. Simply Safe is changing that with an arsenal of sensors and cameras designed to blanket you with protection, ready to set up right out of the box. So put home security back on the top of your list with Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com for a special holiday price. Ruby Tuesday's new homestyle combo starting at $11.99. Choose from six all new, creamy, hearty, savory, cheesy entrees, plus endless trips to the garden bar. Join us at Ruby Tuesday for new homestyle combos starting at $11.99. Say hello to the BravaJet Mopping Robot from iRobot. Its precision jet spray and vibrating cleaning head loosen and scrub stains, all while navigating kitchens, bathrooms, and those hard-to-reach places. You and BravaJet from iRobot. Better together. There, Rosanna, Rosanna, there. I always felt that my comedy was just to make things be all right. It's the story of my life. This is not a bed. It's proven quality sleep. The new Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed from $9.99 intelligently senses your movement and automatically adjusts on each side to keep you both effortlessly comfortable. It can even warm your feet to help you fall asleep faster. How smart is that? Smarter sleep to help you shed those sugar cookies, get a running start on the holidays, and take it all in with the patience of a saint. Don't miss the last chance to save up to $500 on select Sleep Number 360 Smart Beds. Ends Monday. At Beaches, everything's included for everyone. That's right, my generation. Yeah, all about a good time. Yeah, all about a good life. You won't believe it too. Beaches see. All Inclusive Resorts. Call 1 800 Beaches. CoQ10 is the number one cardiologist recommended supplement for heart health. I take QNOL CoQ10. Why? Because QNOL has three times better absorption than regular CoQ10. QNOL, the better CoQ10. This is CNN, the most trusted name in news. Democrats appear to be sharpening their knives as they prepare to regain control of the House. And sources tell CNN that Trump is concerned that impeachment is a, quote, real possibility. I want to bring in now Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell, who sits on the House Judiciary Committee and is also a member of the House Intel Committee. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Good evening, Don. Thanks for having me back. So as I just said, we're hearing the president is worried tonight. Should he be? What is this guy just learning constitutional law for the first time? If you commit a bunch of abuses uh, in office, you get a free pass. Is that what he thought? I mean, Don, that's crazy. Uh, the days of presidential immunity are over. We're going to conduct uh, fairer investigations than he deserves. Uh, but there's not going to be a rush to judgment here. We're going to put together an impenetrable case. And if he crossed a red line, he'll be held accountable. But mm -hmm. first things first, we also think we can collaborate with him on immigration, on infrastructure, on the DREAM Act, on the Voting Rights Act. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot that's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. So for people who think, oh, my gosh, they're ready now, the knives are sharpening and they wanted the impeachment is not all, you know, it, they're going to do it. What do you say? I say, again, we're going to put together an impenetrable case, and we're not going to be as reckless with the facts okay. uh, as he is. All right. So, listen, White House officials are telling CNN that they don't think campaign finance violations would bring bipartisan support for impeachment. Are they minimizing the crimes that have allegedly taken place? I see it as propensity evidence. And in the law, that means that shows that maybe a prior bad act, like paying off a porn star, would show that he acted in similar ways in other situations. So I don't necessarily think we should go all in uh, on that payoff. But I think it does show that this shadowy operator and the people around him probably did the same thing when it came to Russia, when it came to Saudi Arabia, when it came uh, to China. And that's really where we should be looking. Can you imagine, I mean, when you said paying off a porn star, it is hard to believe that that's what we're talking about with the president of the United States, right? Yeah, but I also think, Don, that looking at what happened with the Clinton impeachment trial and that he came out even stronger, we don't want to martyrize uh, President Trump, especially when there's a lot more alarming conduct that mm -hmm. actually affects people in their everyday lives that we mm -hmm. should be looking to stop and intervene where we can. So Congressman Jerry Nadler, I just want to play this, what he said about the SDNY prosecutor's allegations that Trump directed his attorney, Michael Cohen, his fixer, to commit a felony by paying off two women over alleged affairs. Here it is. 
they would be impeachable offenses. Uh, whether they are important enough to justify an impeachment is a different question, but certainly they'd be impeachable offenses because even though they were committed before the president became president, uh, they were committed in, 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 in the service of fraudulently obtaining the office. So obviously the allegations against the president haven't been proven, but uh, if they are, do you agree with Congressman Nadler that they are impeachable offenses? I think that they're instructive as to the way that he works. If this is all we have, I would say we shouldn't hang our hat on that. But I think we should look at this in the light of this is probably how he conducted himself in his business and personal life. And so we should get his taxes, take an MRI uh, to his uh, finances, understand if he's making decisions based on his financial interests rather than uh, traditional mm -hmm. American values. Yeah. Listen, I ask, I'll ask you a similar question, uh, same question but a different way that I asked a moment ago. A lot of Democrats are eager to impeach the president but have no idea what the final report from the special counsel's office, what will it entail. Do you think that Democrats should stop all the impeachment talk until then? As it relates to Russia, we should wait for Bob Mueller's uh, mm -hmm. report. But we should still get his taxes. We should still see when it comes to the Jamal Khashoggi case, which is happening in real time, and we see his prior financial relationships with the Saudis, and that's driving his decisions here. We should understand that. And Don, we can't forget that he was he received a $500 million loan from the Chinese during the same week that he eased sanctions on a Chinese company. So there's a lot uh, to look at, a lot of financial uh, entanglements he has. Uh, and again, the days of getting free passes on those are over. Congressman, we're where do you come down on a sitting president being indicted? Because, you know, there's back and forth. Oh, well, he can or he can't. Where do you come down with this? Well, I, I don't agree that he cannot. Uh, but if that's the DOJ policy, I think we should look at uh, extending the statute of limitations if a DOJ policy uh, prevents someone from being uh, indicted. It should just pause until that person gets out of office. They shouldn't be able to escape uh, being held accountable uh, because they win uh, re-election. And Don, there's also an issue here that because the president may fear he's going to go to jail if he doesn't win re-election, he may be acting erratically as we get closer to the presidential election mm -hmm. uh, to try and save, uh, you know, his own skin. Congressman, I want to play what the former FBI director James Comey said uh, in front of a live audience uh, at New York City's 92nd Street Y about the possibility of impeachment. He did this over the weekend. Here it is. I hope Donald Trump is not removed from office by impeachment because it would let the country off the hook and it would drive into the fabric of our nation a third of the people believing there was a coup. And we need a moment of inflection where we all get off the couch and say that is not who we are and in a landslide rid ourselves of this attack on our values. I think a lot of people feel that way. Do you think he has a point? He does have a point, Don, and I, if I had my way, we would impeach him at the ballot box and prove that democracy works. Uh, but we also have a rule of law, and no one's above the law, especially the president. And if he crossed clear, bright red lines, he's going to have to be held accountable. And it's going to be a tough uh, you know, choice for the nation and the Congress. Uh, but I think the best thing we can do is to just assure the American people we're going to do our job in conducting oversight and looking at what he's done and seek bipartisan buy-in if he's crossed the line. Congressman Swalwell, thank you very much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Don. New incident of hate speech and violence throughout the country continuing a troubling trend. More about what's behind the increase of hate in America next. It was the holiday season, and in your garage, a brand new John Deere. That's not a mirage. With 60 months financing at 0%, say happy holidays to money well spent. If additional offers are what you desire, visit your John Deere dealer before they expire. Now start up your engines and drive out of sight. New John Deere equipment for all, and to all a good night. See your John Deere dealer today to discover more great deals and special financing offers. New year, new Deere. HelloFresh delivers delicious ingredients and simple recipes right to your doorstep. So all you have to do is choose it, cook it, taste it, love it. Use code TV60 to get $60 off. HelloFresh. Get cooking. Give a gift that brings the ones you love even closer with a DNA kit from 23andMe. And this holiday, get 30% off each kit at 23andMe.com. Dick, I want you to be my VP. Oh, George, come on. Lone Ranger needs a Tonto. 
Vice has more Golden Globe nominations than any movie this year. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Including Christian Bale, Best Actor, Amy Adams, Best Supporting Actress, Sam Rockwell, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Picture of the Year. I'll handle energy, military, foreign policy. I like that. This isn't something that a vice president really does. Huh? It is now. <laughs> Vice, rated R. Since everything's included at Beaches New Grill in Jamaica, you can do all the things you love with the ones you love. Because the best thing you can give your family on vacation is you. Fight my generation. Yeah, we're all about a good time. Yeah, we're all about a good life. You won't believe it till you see. This is gonna be a fun ride. Yeah, we're all about Beaches all-inclusive resorts, where you can feel like family again. Call 1-800-BEACHES and save up to 65%. I just got my Ancestry DNA results. 74% Italian. And I found out that I'm from the big toe of that sexy Italian boot. So this holiday season, it's Ancestry DNA per tutti! Order your kit now at Ancestry.com. Introducing Add-On Advantage, a new way to save on travel. Now, when you book a flight, you unlock discounts on select hotels that you can add on to your trip up until the day you leave. Add-On Advantage. Only when you book with Expedia. My heat has just kicked in half big time. TMI. Too, too much. Oh. That is the reason to tune in. The night of your life. Happy Wait! Birthday. Where's Grandpa? If you're making too many bathroom trips, pay attention. Super Beta Prostate has clinically tested ingredients that help reduce urges to urinate so you can enjoy more of life's best moments. How we see, how we look. Great eyewear is all about both. Thoughtful design. Precision optics. Styles people love. At zenny.com, we make it all stunningly affordable. So you can see the world the way it's meant to be seen. In perfect focus. Zenny.com. Eyewear for everyone. I bet you've never seen a bed like this. It's the new Craftmatic Legacy Rising Pillow Rest Adjustable Bed. Featuring bedside power plugs, underbed nightlights, and more. For less, up to 50% less than Tempur-Pedic Sleep Number and other adjustables. Call now. you got to see how little they cost. Anderson Cooper 360. Tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on CNN. New tonight, a jury's deliberating the sentence for James Fields. James Fields is the man who was found guilty on Friday in the death of 32-year-old Heather Heyer after he ran her over with his car. Fields was attending last year's Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville when things got ugly between white nationalists and counter-protesters. During the protests, Fields got into his car and plowed through the counter-protesters at about 28 miles per hour striking and killing Heather Heyer. That Nazi just drove into people. Well, Heyer died from blunt force injuries to the torso. She suffered a number of major internal injuries. Her aorta was severed. She also had lacerations to her lungs and liver. The jury found Fields guilty on a number of counts, one of them being first-degree murder, which is punishable by up to life in prison. Ultimately, the judge in the case will decide Fields' sentence, but will consider the jury's recommendation. Fields also faces 30 federal hate crimes charges in a separate case. Following the deadly violence in Charlottesville, President Trump infamously said this about what happened there. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. Very fine people now. First degree murder. Joining me now is Wes Lowry, national reporter for The Washington Post. Wes, good evening to you. Thanks for having me, Don. So obviously nothing can be done to repair the damage done at Charlottesville. But do you think justice was served? 
Certainly. Well, I think for Heather Heyer's family, at least, and for the other victims, you have to remember there were dozens of people who were injured. Heather Heyer was fortunately the only person who was killed. Um, but there were dozens of people who were injured when James Fields plowed his, his car into those rallies. For those folks, they have received some measure of justice. But, but you can't imagine uh, that this makes it much easier for Heather Heyer's family. And, and I think that for many Americans who are, who are still scarred and traumatized by the idea even that there were um, there was a massive rally of Nazis in Charlottesville, Virginia, and, and these, these out, outward displays of hatred um, and far-right violence that we've seen increasingly in recent years. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything that can make it better for Heather Heyer's family, and our, our thoughts go out to her. Uh, you can, we can only imagine. We can only imagine. Uh, Wes, you know, the president said there were very fine people on both sides. But remember, it was just a few months ago he started calling himself a nationalist. Watch this. They have a word. It sort of became old-fashioned. It's called a nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. I'm proud of our country. And I am a nationalist. It's a word that hasn't been used too much. Some people use it, but I'm very proud. I think it should be brought back. Call me a nationalist if you'd like. So, Wes, do you, do you think the president takes hate and white nationalism seriously? I think that time and time again, the president of the United States has shown an unwillingness to unequivocally denounce uh, these far-right groups and their violence and their rhetoric. He has very often employed language that mirrors their own language. That you know, There's that line that Andrew Gillum used back in the Florida race about his then opponent, where he said, I'm not saying you're a racist, but the racists think you're a racist, right. right? What the president has done time and time again, and not just as the president, going back even to the campaign trail, is employ the language of these far-right groups, white nationalist groups, racist groups, receiving um, the endorsements and the full-throated supports of people like David Duke and then pretending to not know who David Duke is. And mm -hmm. so what we, what we know is that, you know, I obviously don't, don't know the president personally and, and, and can't speak to whether or not, you know, he actually personally believes any of these things. But what I do know is he's played coy and he's played cute with these groups and he certainly hasn't decried their support um, and, and pushed it away. In fact, he's done things that many people, many experts think have only emboldened these groups. Yeah. Wes, let's talk about some more incidents. Is there a number that we can talk about? Authorities in Pittsburgh investigating anti-Semitic pamphlets that were found uh, around Pittsburgh, including Squirrel Hill. We know that's where the 11 members of the Tree of Life Synagogue were gunned down back mm -hmm. in October. And then in Ohio uh, today, the FBI announced the arrest of a man allegedly planning attacks against synagogues. Here's what the ADL found, that a 57% increase in anti-Semitic incidents in 2017, it is looking like 2018 was not much better than that. Of course, and, and, and by most measures, not only the ADL's measures, the SPLC's measures, uh, the Global Terrorism Task Force measures, by most measures, by every measure we can find, there is an increase in this right-wing violence and far-right violence, right? Whether that's anti-Semitic, whether it's anti-LGBT, anti-black, anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant. And what the experts believe is that that violence is, correlates to the coarsening of our political rhetoric, specifically mm -hmm. on the political right, that we saw a massive increase in these militia groups and far-right groups after the election of Barack Obama, but that these violent attacks like we saw in Pittsburgh and in Kentucky and, and, and like we saw even here at CNN with the bombs being mailed in just a few weeks ago, that, that the way that our political rhetoric has coarsened is only emboldening these types of people and that statements like the president's where he says, you know, there are very fine people on both sides of Charlottesville, what the experts believe is that those types of statements certainly don't discourage far right-wing violence or Nazi violence or anti-Semitic violence. In fact, that they perhaps encourage that type of violence. Wes Lowry, always appreciate your time and, and your thoughts. Thank you very much. Of course. Thanks for having me, Doug. Time Magazine announcing its person of the year in just hours. Two people on the short list, President Trump and Robert Mueller. Who's going to get the top spot? sweet home, your sanctuary. You know you need to protect it with home security. 
But traditional alarm companies have made things so complicated, you just keep putting it on the bottom of your list. Simply Safe is changing that with an arsenal of sensors and cameras designed to blanket you with protection, ready to set up right out of the box. So put home security back on the top of your list with Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com for a special holiday price. Aaron's Gifts of Greatness event means you can bring home truly great gifts for your family. Because all you need is just $1 to get started leasing to own with deals on great brands in furniture, electronics, and appliances. With no credit needed and free delivery and setup. Plus, you can enter for a chance to win a home makeover shopping spree worth $10,000. Visit a participating store or errands.com and get your holiday shopping started with just $1. That's the greatness of Aaron's Gifts of Greatness. Metastatic breast cancer is relentless. But I'm relentless, too. NBC doesn't take a day off. And neither will I. And I treat my NBC with new everyday Verzenio. The only one of its kind that can be taken every day. In fact, Verzenio is a CDK4 and 6 inhibitor for postmenopausal women with HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, approved with hormonal therapy as an everyday treatment for a relentless disease. Verzenio Plus and AI is proven to help women have significantly more time without disease progression. And more than half of women saw their tumors shrink versus an AI. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, and may cause dehydration or infection. Before taking Verzenio, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Verzenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Serious liver problems can occur. Symptoms may include tiredness, loss of appetite, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising more easily than normal. Blood clots that can lead to death have also occurred. Talk to your doctor right away if you notice pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, or rapid breathing or heart rate. Tell your doctor if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or plan to become pregnant. Common side effects include nausea, infections, low red and white blood cells and platelets, decreased appetite, headache, abdominal pain, tiredness, vomiting, and hair thinning or loss. I'm relentless, and my doctor and I choose to treat my metastatic breast cancer with Verzenio. Be relentless. Ask your doctor about everyday Verzenio. And the flag is going dun, 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 dun. Stream the world's best nonfiction programs free until 2019. Curiosity Stream from the founder of Discovery Channel, home of award winning documentaries and original series. Follow your curiosity. Sign up now and pay nothing until January. Strong legs of lumber and arms of steel. He eats a bowl of hammers and every meal. He can hold your house in the palm of his hand. He's your old man, not an old man. Big Jim got you covered. Great Big Jim, there ain't no other. So, this is covered, right? Yes, ma'am. Take care of him for you right now. Giddy up! Hi, this is Jamie. We need some help. Looking good. At Booking.com, we can't guarantee you'll be good at that water jet thingy, but we can guarantee the best price on this hotel or any accommodation from homes to yurts. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Time Magazine set to name its 2018 Person of the Year tomorrow morning. The title is about the influence of the person or persons over the past year. It's not necessarily an honor. This year's shortlist includes President Trump, but it also includes Robert Mueller, the separated families, and uh, the murdered Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, President Trump loves the magazine and has a fascination with time. Since his very first appearance back in 1989 with a somewhat flattering nod, to his brashness. Those covers have been significantly more critical since he was elected president. His immigration policies, policies portrayal of uh, being in, in over his head and Trump being portrayed as a monarch have probably not gone over well. I don't know, as the first one he did. Look at those covers. The president is so enraptured with time, at least five of the Trump Organization's golf clubs in America and Europe have displayed this. It's a fake cover with the headline, Donald Trump, The Apprentice, is a television smash. That is not a real cover. It is a fake. The magazine even asked for the fake covers to be taken down. What else is fake? This claim. I think I was on the cover of Time magazine twice in my life and like six times in the last number of months. 
So you tell me, which is more important, real estate or politics? Okay, that's, <laughs> that's the way. Is that true, Harold? So I have six for politics, and I have two for real estate, or whatever they put me on for. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. At that time, it had just been once, not six. So last year, Trump claimed that he was on the verge of getting the honor back to back. He also said time gave him a heads up uh, beforehand. That turned out to be at least a case, uh, maybe a misunderstanding, or at worst, the worst case is a lie. The magazine said they don't comment on who gets picked until the cover is published. It's part of a sort of annual tradition for the president, from lobbying for his uh, inclusion to claiming others said he should be, you know, to should be or to the criticizing time uh, for the other people chosen. The president has been talking and tweeting about this for years. <laughs> so what else is new? So here's a question. Could individual one be named the person of the year? I want to bring in now Brian Stelter and Elena Blott, uh, the White House correspondent for The Atlantic. Good evening. Evening. So. Let's see, he last won Person of the Year 2016, yeah. really wanted to win it back-to-back -back years. It didn't happen. So what is, you know, I don't know. Is he going to win? Make your case. <laughs> I think he's the man, you know. Do you think he's going to win? I, I think it is Trump. Here's why. The time Person of the Year, it marks a moment where we are as a country and as a society. And like it or not, Trump is the son. Everything else revolves around him, politics and culture, all of the above. Uh, some people love him, some hate him. Some think he's crazy like a fox, others think he's just crazy. You go to a dinner party or something, people are telling you Trump's mentally ill. Others say he's a hero, he's a villain. People are arguing about Trump two years in, uh, even though the midterms swung in the Democrats' favor, it was a referendum on Trump. Yeah. So I think the time editors, looking at all the options, they're going to end up with the obvious option. The reason why I might be wrong, though, yeah. he did win in 2016. It's only been two years. Uh, the difference now is he wouldn't be honored for winning the election. This would be a recognition of the scandals and problems that are plaguing his presidency. You may be on to something, because, you know, I go to a, a, a party or something. Try to talk to me about Trump. Right. Well, no, try not to. Try uh, no, to no, 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 no. I want you to do it. Try to talk to me about Trump. Wait, what do you mean? Uh, uh, what do you think of President Trump, Don? Oh, you know what? Hey, how's your drink? <laughs> it's good to see you. You try to change the yeah, subject? Oh, all the time. We right. have a, in my household, right. we have a no talk about Trump policy. Oh, really? Especially, oh, so, yeah. And it works. that's all people want to talk about. I'll Every try time it. I don't I'm think out it to works. dinner, people come up to us. My boyfriend and I out there come up to us. So we say, no Trump talk, right? <laughs> How's the weather? <laughs> Elena, you're Team Mueller uh, for Person of the Year. Why is that? So as all reporters know well, there haven't been a ton of consistencies in the Trump administration, save for, I think, its reaction to the specter of Mueller and what he might find mm -hmm. in his Russia probe, that final report. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but Sean Spicer the other day um, tweeted and quickly deleted a link to a predicted um, kind of betting pool for how many times Trump would tweet about Robert Mueller before the end of the year. And I think if you can say that you occupy that much headspace in the lead of the free world, it's a pretty powerful position to be in. Yeah, well, I, I'm thinking Trump occupies everyone else's brain space, but Mueller's the one that occupies Trump's brain space. Exactly. Ah, see, He's ah, she, 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 but don't let me get persuaded. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna no, maybe you, she did. I think Mueller's gonna be next year's time person of the year. Well, Brian, there's so much we still don't know about Mueller's probe. That's why I think he's gonna be next year's winner. Brian, admit it when you're wrong, because. <laughs> Think about this. She's right. Occupies the space, right? And people talk about the Russia investigation. And even on um, Trump's favorite channels or conservative, they're always talking about, oh, it's a wish on it, whatever. That's right. what he talks about. Th that that's all. True. That's most of the things he tweets about. That it. is true. And look, part of that obsession that makes you wonder, about. why is he so worried? An innocent man doesn't worry this much yeah. about an investigation. But that's neither here nor there. Look, okay. if it's not Trump or Mueller, I think it should be the year of the woman, right? Let, so let me many go over, women let me go over some of them. in 2018. The problem, of course, is it should it shouldn't just be one year of the women, so I'm not okay. sure about that nomination so, either. Both of you, let me go over this. How much time do we have? Do we have a little bit of time? <laughs> okay, uh, so we have Donald Trump. Right. I think it's a, a, an important one, the separated families. Let, let me go mm. to Elena first. What do you think, Elena? I think it's been one of the major cultural touchstones of the year, specifically because it ties into an issue such as, you know, immigration and potentially demonization of other races that really dominated the narrative of Donald Trump's campaign. So the issue of separated families, I think, really shows um, kind of the fruition of what people okay. really feared most, perhaps, from Trump's campaign. Other people we have, we put it up, we've got uh, Vladimir Putin that's up there, Ryan Coogler, Christine Blasey Ford, uh, we, we mentioned Jamal Khashoggi. March for Our Lives activists, I think that they stand a chance. Um, Moon Jae-in, Jae -in, 
and Meghan Markle, the Korean president, obviously, but Meghan Markle. I think that separated families and March for Our Lives activists also have a chance. Go ahead, Brian. The reason why the Parkland students and the other gun, uh, gun control advocates stand a chance is because they are working on a long-term solution. You know, they thought about the ballot box this year, but they're also thinking about 2020 and beyond. And there was something inspiring about the way young people were motivated this year to take action. Last year time went with the Me Too movement, the silence breakers, mm -hmm. the women in many different fields who came forward and spoke out against harassment. Well, I, I think we, we saw equally powerfully this year well, were these testimonies, both from young people and from parents of gun violence victims. And it would be nice to see those elevated to a national platform like this cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, do you, wanna, do you wanna talk about that? I just think that Brian is completely right. And I think one of the oh, reasons wow. they haven't been elevated to that national platform is because of this 24 seven news cycle. I mean, it, you know, it really is such a shame that we talk about people like the Parkland activists only in the aftermath of a mass shooting and then it mm -hmm. fades into the background. So in many ways, I think putting uh, the Parkland act activists on the cover would, um, you know, restart a conversation that not only needs to start again, but continue for much longer than it has. Yeah. So uh, let's see what happens. Well, if, I'm still uh, thinking with Trump. No, no. What happens if? Okay, let's say it is him. He'll say, "Of course, they got it right." Da, 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 but if it doesn't. It should well, have been a, me. That's the thing. Now, two years ago, he said this is an incredible honor. And it's true what you were saying before. He does care about the cover of Time magazine. He does. In the same way he cares about CNN and the New York Times and SNL. But if he's on the cover tomorrow, it's not an honor this year. So much has changed in the past two years. If he's on the cover tomorrow, it's because of the scandals and controversies that plague his administration. The fact that it's hard for him to even find a chief of staff. That's why he'll be on the cover if, if he is tomorrow, if I'm okay. right. Okay. Uh, uh, most of the people on the short list are connected to political files. Lines. Yeah. Uh, time ran a reader's poll. K pop band BTS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no, I guess I'm not. That's young all about enough passion. That. Okay. That shows you who has the most passionate fans in the world. Don, yeah. your fans are a close second. Okay, I know, I gotta go, but it's, <laughs> it will be an honor to be on there. I've been on there 15 times, you know that, hey. right? Hey. <laughs> Thank you both, I appreciate it. Thanks for Thanks, watching. God. Our coverage continues. Hey, Jen, which tie says trustworthy but also fun? Gold down, oil up. Oil down, gold up. This is too busy. We need to make sure people can actually use this stuff. Which one says hours of free live streaming coverage without cable or subscription fees? Aluminum. Aluminum. You ready, Zach? No, we're ready. Welcome to the show. Let's make finance make sense. Through the Subaru Share the Love event, we've shown just how far love can go. Over 100 national parks protected. More than 50,000 animals rescued. Nearly 2 million meals delivered. Over 1,800 wishes granted. That's $140 million donated to charity by Subaru and its retailers over 11 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe you got me a tennis bracelet. Mm-hmm. She can thank me for that. I showed my dad this deal at Hellsburg. He bought jewelry, and I got this. It's my finder's fee. Get a free Nintendo Switch system when you buy a gift at Hellsburg Diamonds. You okay there, Kurt? We're about to move. Karate helps relieve some of the house buying stress. At least you don't have to worry about homeowner's insurance. Call Geico. Geico? Helps with homeowner's insurance? Been doing it for years. I'm calling Geico right now. Good idea. Get to know Geico and see how easy homeowners and renters insurance can be. This holiday season, make Tommy John the ultimate stocking stuffer. And say goodbye to awkward adjustment moments like these. The wedgie shift, the party pick, and the hide and seek. 
You won't have those problems when you upgrade to Tommy John. Our underwear is made with a luxuriously soft, lightweight, breathable fabric that stretches in 16 different directions. It stays put so there's no bunching, no riding up, and no more wedgies. Guaranteed. Our stay put waistband won't roll down or leave marks, and Tommy John underwear is designed for maximum breathability, which means you'll be cool and dry all day long. Overcome the uncomfortable with Tommy John. Give the gift of life-changing comfort with limited edition gifts. Visit TommyJohn.com now and use the promo code on your screen to get 20% off. Plus, find out how you can get free expedited shipping and guaranteed Christmas delivery on orders placed by December 19th. That's TommyJohn.com. Tommy John. No adjustment needed. We are rebellious. Trendsetters. One of a kind. We are what we wear. American style. Coming in January on CNN. I never thought I'd say this, but I found bladder leak underwear that's actually pretty. Always discreet boutique. Hidden inside is a super absorbent core that quickly turns liquid to gel. So I feel protected and pretty. Always discreet boutique. Here at Snowfest. For your worst sore throat pain, try new Vicks Vapor Cool Drops. It's not candy, it's powerful relief. Vaporize sore throat pain with new Vicks Vapor Cool Drops. Not sure you have the right credit card? Know which one to get? Turn to the nerves. Dinner's on.